The diagram shows a curve with parametric equations as shown for t greater than zero, and the shaded region is enclosed by the curve, the x-axis, and the y-axis, and the line y equals two. It makes this question a little bit different because normally you're looking at um, a line sort of uh, that's parallel to the y-axis, but here it's parallel to the x. And then we're asked to show the area can be given as this. Now, when I saw this question, I was very tempted to split it up into two shapes and you know find the area of this rectangle and then this bit here, but there's no way that, that is going to lead to what they have, like just a single integral here. Um, so I abandoned that and then thought about it. And actually, this question is pretty harsh, but it's expecting us to integrate instead of along the x-axis, along the y-axis. This is a topic that used to be on the old specification, um, and now it's moved to further maths. But because it's a parametric one, and, and this is the last question, they've thrown it in as a little tester, I think. Like, I wouldn't personally have... Um, you know, prior to this, taught this in lessons because I always just thought, you know, it's uh, it's always going to be along the x-axis. It does work in the same way. That's the good thing about it. So, okay, our integral is going to be instead of you know here to here, it's actually going to be from zero to two. Hold on to your hat. This is this is going to be okay. Zero to two, and then we're actually going to be integrating x with respect to y. And then when I do it parametrically, it's going to change to x still, but then dy by dt, dt. And I'm going to have some new limits. Okay, so actually I'm going to figure them out first. So when x is equal to, I'm sorry, it's not x. I'm so in the habit of doing that. But no, remember, we're integrating with respect to this. I'm going to write y equals here just to make it clear. So when y is equal to 0, then 2t squared plus 3t is 0. So t times 2t plus 3 is equal to 0. So t is 0 or minus 3 over 2. But they've told us that t is greater or equal to 0. So I'm going to reject that one. And I found my bottom limit. t is equal to 0. Then when y is equal to 2, We've got 2t squared plus 3t equal to 2. So I can minus 2 and set it equal to 0, ready to factorize 2t and t. Okay, and if I put a 2 here and a 1 here, I get 4t and t. So I'll put a plus here and a minus here. t is equal to a half or minus 2. Reject that one. Okay, that's some good groundwork. So area is going to equal the integral oh sorry i didn't put it up here actually t equals a half the integral from zero to a half of x which is this two over two t plus one to the four multiplied by dy by dt And that is going to be 4t plus 3. And then that's going to become half 0. Multiply the top by 4t plus 3. 8t plus 6 over 2t plus 1 to 4. And we're there. The harsh thing about this is that if you don't have, I mean, you can still do part B if you don't see all of that, except the fact you don't have the limits. So I guess you might, even though if you can't see to integrate along the y-axis, you might think, right, I need to find out what y, what t is when y is 2 and when y is 0. But I don't know. Um, I think it's quite, quite harsh, personally. Now it says to determine the exact area. Okay, we've just got to do the integral. I'm actually going to do it in two different ways. My natural inclination is to do a substitution here but I did, I've seen somebody do it by parts and it, it works pretty much as well I think it's a little bit easier to make a mistake on because you get all these fractions but I think uh, you know let's do it both ways so I'm gonna let with the substitution you have to decide on your substitution we're gonna let u equal 2t plus 1 because that is gonna make the bottom much simpler so when t is 0 u is gonna be just 1, and when t is a half, u is equal to 2. 
and b u by b t is going to be 2, which means b t by b u is going to be a half. And the area will become the integral from 1 to 2 of now you can either make t the subject and sub n for u, but what I did is I noticed I could just times it through by 4. So I've got 4u is 8t plus 4. So actually it's just going to be 4u plus 2. Okay, but you might be more tempted to write t as u minus 1 over 2 and then sub it in. It's a little bit more complicated, but it'll get you there. So 4u plus 2 over u to the 4. And then I'm timesing by dt by du, and then uh, du. So it's going to be a half du. You might alternatively make um, t the subject, and then it would be dt equals a half du, which you would sub in. I don't know if you, maybe you do it like that. I prefer to do it like I've done, but we get the same thing as the key result. Um, okay, and now I'm going to. All right, let's take it step by step. I'm going to just have the 4u plus 2 to give me 2u plus 1 over u to the 4. And actually, this has become a year 1 integral. We can write it as 2u to the minus 3 plus u to the minus 4. So add 1 to the power. Divide by the new power, I'm going to get minus u to the minus a half here. And then for the other one, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, I'm going to minus a third. Okay, then it's time to sub in. When you sub in the 2, you actually get minus 7 over 24. And then you might sub in the 1, you actually get minus... 4 over 3, so it's minus minus 4 over 3, which gives us our answer 25 over 24. Right, now for method 2. I mean, method 1 is interesting because, yeah, the parametric, it, it feels like a substitution because we're using the chain rule and then we're doing another substitution. Is now I'm into well I've done the substitution in the well in the parametric bit, and now I'm going to integrate by parts. So I don't need to change the limits, but I am going to get a little bit of an awkward expression. It's going to be eight t plus six multiplied by two t plus one to the minus four, and this is going to be my u because it's. It's going to simplify nicely when I differentiate and I put it into the formula for integration by parts. This is going to be my v dash. So u dash is equal to 8 and v is equal to, now I've got to be really careful here. So I'm going to, I'm kind of, I'm using reverse chain rule really. So 2t two, two plus 1 to the minus 3. I'm going to divide through by that minus 3, same as times by minus a third. I'm going to also need to divide through by 2. Because when I differentiate, I do the opposite. I times by 2 with the chain rule, and I times by minus 3. So there we go. Okay, and then we get u v minus the integral of u dash v. I haven't put the limits in, but I will now. So I'm going to get minus 1 over 6 times 8t plus 6. Uh, 2t plus 1 to the minus 3 evaluated between a half and 0 and then minus the integral of it's going to be 8 so I'm going to be doing 8 times minus a 6 that's actually going to become 4 over 3 or minus 4 over 3 I can change the sign here I, would, I always do that. If I've got a double negative, just swap it around to make it a plus rather than having lots of negatives because when we integrate it in a second, we're going to get another negative. Then 2t plus 1 to the minus 3. So between a half and 0. Might actually just come down here for a bit more space. So... Okay, I could just start actually subbing in 
for the half and the zero. Not a bad idea, just to simplify that first bit. So minus one sixth times, uh, it's going to be 10 actually. Okay, you can put it all in your calculator, but sometimes, uh, I suppose you could say it's a bit more careful, but sometimes it's just easier to just like do bits by hand. So I've got four plus six, 10, and then I'm going to get two to the minus three. I'm going to be divided by eight. So minus five over 24. And then I'm minusing what happens when I put in zero. So again, minus one sixth, but this time I'm going to be just times in by six. And that's it, because I'm going to do one to the minus three. So I just actually get a minus one here, so minus and minus one. And then when I integrate, okay, so this is why I think this route's harder because I've now got to integrate this again and avoid any mistakes. So I'm gonna raise the power by one, divide by the new power, divided by minus two, but I'm also gonna divide by two from here. So I think I'm gonna get minus a third. And what I would do here is just check by differentiating back, I'm gonna times through by minus two and two. That will give me minus four. That will get me back to my plus four over three. I, of course, I lower the power to minus three. So this is going to work. So, um, and I can just put this bit inside the square brackets. Right, meanwhile, what do I have over here? I think I've got 21 over 24, because this is 24 over 24 that I'm adding. No, I think I've made a mistake. I think it's 19. Okay, and then I'm going to be minusing. A third divided, well, sorry, times by um, what is going to be, it's going to be two to the minus two, so it's times by a quarter. So one over 12. And then I'm going to be minusing a third, actually. gets me a quarter. So 19 over 24 plus a quarter. This, just remember I'm doing it by hand, this ends up being six over 24 and we get the same answer, 25 over 24. Okay, two different ways to do it. I'd say quite easy to make a mistake with uh, the second method. It's a bit longer, but they both work. Awkward question. Okay, this is one to make a note of. Maybe do a little bit more practice of integrating along the y-axis. Just um, I need to look at the old specification or just look online. Um, I think I might have something somewhere on it. But anyway, just look at, you know, basically look over this again if you've never seen it. So you're ready next time. Well done.